story about you. Now, of course, we don't really know if you look like this man or not. You might look more like this. You might be tall or short. Your skin may be dark or light. You could be rich or poor, fat or thin, man or woman. But it doesn't matter who you are or where you live, you're all the same under the skin. So let's push all these people together like this. Now we have just an average person. It might be anybody. Suppose we say it's you. You're a farmer, so you must have some land. And, of course, you should raise a crop. Well, you're going right to work, eh? An industrious man like you deserves a nice house to live in. You'll need an ox to help you in the fields. Huh? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Much better, isn't it? And finally, we'll give you a pig and some chickens. Now, I wonder which one you value the most. Tell us, what do you think is your most valuable possession? You think it's your ox. But suppose someone should steal your ox. But you could get along without your ox, so he can't be your most valuable possession. Could it be your pigs and chickens? Let's see. Suppose they should get sick and die. Mr. Pig, you're dead now. Thank you. Mmm, this is very sad, for you've lost all your livestock. But then, you still have your house and, ah, my house. That is my most valuable possession. But what if your house should burn down, like this? Now you say that you have lost everything. There's nothing valuable left. But haven't you forgotten something? How about your body? Hmm? Yes, your body. With a strong, healthy body, you can rebuild your house. You can work in your fields. And you can trade your crops for another ox, another pig, and more chicken. Why, it's easy to see, then, that the most valuable possession you have is your own body. And to keep this body healthy, you should learn something about it. Hmm? Those are very fine muscles you have. Of course, you know that these muscles are very important. They give you the power to move about and do your work in the fields. Now, if we could look inside of you, we could see your skeleton, the bones of your body. Now, why do you have all these bones? Well, the best way to answer that is to take your skeleton away and see what happens. Uh-oh, look out. Down you go. You see, you really need that skeleton. It's the framework that holds your body up. We'd better get it back for you. Well, where is it? Oh, there you are. Come on, lazy bones. Get up. These bones and muscles of yours get their strength and energy from the food you eat. Sit down here and we'll give you something to eat right now. There you are. Oh, and while you're eating, we're going to show you just what happens to this food as your body takes it in. So if you'll just open your mouth, we'll go right inside and see what's going on in there. Thank you. See, the food is being ground up by the teeth. And at the same time, it's being mixed with saliva. Saliva helps digest the food. Now, as you swallow, the food moves down to your stomach. Your stomach works and churns the food again and again, until finally, it's reduced to a soft, pulpy mass. And now the food moves on down into your intestines. Here, in your intestines, is where your body really begins to use the food. Now, perhaps you wonder how the food in your intestines can bring strength and energy to the rest of your body. All right, 
Let's see what's happening to your food now. Do you see all the little tubes attached to your intestines? Well, these are blood vessels. They pick up the food and send it along through a series of rivers and canals known as the blood stream. Now, here is your heart. Your heart, busily at work night and day, is the pump that keeps the bloodstream flowing through your body. Yes, it's your blood that carries the food to your bones and makes them strong. And it's your blood that carries the food to your muscles and gives them energy. That's why it's important that you eat the right kinds of food. It's not good to fill your stomach with just one kind, like beans, for instance. You should have a variety of foods at each meal. Look at the meal we just gave you. There's some corn, a piece of chicken, a green vegetable, and some fruit. In other words, there is a variety of foods. Foods that will bring strength and energy to all parts of your body. You don't have to eat just these foods, for your market is full of other fruits and vegetables and meats that will do just as well. The important thing to remember is to have several different kinds of food every time you eat. Now, your body must have something else to keep it working properly. It's the air you breathe. Have you ever thought how important air is to your body? Well, let's find out. If we could look inside your chest, we'd see how your lungs work. Now, breathe in. And breathe out. Again, breathe in and out. Now wait, hold this breath. A little longer. Uh-huh. See what has happened? Your body has used up the air, taken all the good out of it. All right, let's breathe out that bad air and take a breath of fresh air. Ah, that's better, isn't it? Yes, your body needs fresh air all the time. That's why your house should have a window, so that you may breathe clean, fresh air even while you sleep. But now that you've learned many new things about your body, perhaps you say, what good will it do me? How can I use this knowledge? Well, that's where your brain comes in. If we could look inside your head, we'd see your brain. Yes, it is your brain that puts knowledge to work. Your brain is a wonderful thing. Already it has done much to help you protect your body. For your brain has shown you how to grow fine crops so that your body may have food. Your brain has taught you how to use the strong muscles of the ox to help you with your work. With your brain, you have learned to build a house to protect your body from the weather. With your brain, you can learn many new things about your body. How to keep it strong and healthy. How to keep it free from sickness and disease. For remember, your body is your most priceless possession. Learn to take care of it. <laughs>